Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, Important Facts of Faith in Connection with the History of Holy Men of Old, by Ellen G. White. Chapter 1, The Creation. When God had formed the earth, there were mountains, hills, and plains, and interspersed among them were rivers and bodies of water. The earth was not one extensive plain, but the monotony of the scenery was broken by hills and mountains, not high and ragged as they now are, but regular and beautiful in shape. The bare high rocks were never seen upon them, but lay beneath the surface, answering as bones to the earth. The waters were regularly dispersed. The hills, mountains, and very beautiful plains were adorned with plants and flowers and tall, majestic trees of every description, which were many times larger and much more beautiful than trees now are. The air was pure and healthful, and the earth seemed like a noble palace. Angels beheld and rejoiced at the wonderful and beautiful works of God. After the earth was created, and the beasts upon it, the father and son carried out their purpose, which was designed before the fall of Satan to make man in their own image. They had wrought together in the creation of the earth and every living thing upon it. And now God says to his son, Let us make man in our image. As Adam came forth from the hand of his Creator, he was of noble height and a beautiful symmetry. He was more than twice as tall as men now living upon the earth and was well proportioned. His features were perfect and beautiful. His complexion was neither white nor sallow, but ruddy, glowing with a rich tint of health. Eve was not quite as tall as Adam. Her head reached a little above his shoulders. She, too, was noble and perfect in symmetry and very beautiful. This sinless pair wore no artificial garments. They were clothed with a covering of light and glory, such as the angels wear. While they lived in obedience to God, this circle of light enshrouded them. Although everything God had made was in the perfection of beauty, and there seemed nothing wanting upon the earth which God had created to make Adam and Eve happy, yet he manifested his great love to them by planting a garden especially for them. A portion of their time was to be occupied in the happy employment of dressing the garden, and a portion in receiving the visits of angels, listening to their instruction, and in happy meditation. Their labor was not wearisome, but pleasant and invigorating. This beautiful garden was to be their home, their special residence. In this garden the Lord placed fruit trees of every description for usefulness and beauty, also lovely flowers which filled the air with fragrance. Everything was tastefully and gloriously arranged. In the midst of the garden stood the tree of life, the glory of which surpassed all other trees. Its fruit looked like apples of gold and silver and was to perpetuate immortality. The leaves contained healing properties. Very happy were the holy pair in Eden. Unlimited control was given them over every living thing. The lion and the lamb sported together peacefully and harmlessly around them or slumbered at their feet. Birds of every variety of color and plumage flitted among the trees and flowers and about Adam and Eve while their melatonin music echoed among the trees in sweet accord to the praises of their Creator. In the midst of the garden near the tree of life stood the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Of this tree the Lord commanded our first parents not to eat, neither to touch it, lest they die. He told them that they might freely eat of all the trees in the garden except one, but if they ate of that tree they should surely die.'